And what our goal is, is to solve for what x is, but the way that we do that is we try to isolate or get the radical by itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get the square root of x plus one by itself by working from the outside in and doing the opposite operation. So I'm gonna add two to both sides, okay, to keep the equation balanced. So that gives us two square root of x plus one equals eight. I wanna do the opposite of multiplying by two. I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by two. So now we're left with square root of x plus one equals four. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this radical, this uh, square root by doing the opposite, and that's to square, okay, both sides. The square and the square root, those cancel one another out. We get x plus one equals 16, and if we subtract one from both sides, we get x equals 15. Now, when you work with radical equations, sometimes you get what are called extraneous solutions, extraneous roots, false answers, however you wanna say it. But what you wanna to do to make sure that this is actually the correct answer is to take 15, go ahead and put it back into the original equation and make sure that it works. Because sometimes, like I said, you do get this false answer, um, so you have to check your answer, so just make sure. So this is gonna be 15 plus one, okay, minus two equals six. So this is 16, square root of 16 is gonna give us four, so that's two times four and that's gonna be eight minus two, and you can see six equals six, so yeah, 15 is, is indeed the correct answer. Sometimes what will happen if this didn't work, you would just say there's no solution. Sometimes when you solve these equations, you get two answers, and maybe one works and one doesn't, or maybe they both don't work, or maybe they both do work, but again, you just wanna double check them in the original equation. Okay, let's look at example B here. Here you can see this doesn't look like a radical equation, like the original one that we did, but it isn't, in, in fact, a radical, because if you see this denominator, that's really representing the cube root of x, the quantity squared. Okay, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work from the outside in towards this variable by doing the inverse or opposite operation. So we've got three x to the two thirds, minus two equals 10. I'm gonna add two to both sides. Okay, and then we've got three x to the two thirds equals 12. I'm gonna divide by three okay, because I'm trying to get that variable by itself, we've got x to the 2 thirds equals four, and then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So instead of the 2 thirds power, I'm gonna raise it to the 3 halves power, like this, and you can see when you have a power to power, you multiply, and so this is just gonna give you x to the first, which is what we wanted, just x by itself, but remember, the denominator is the root, so this is saying the square root of four, the numerator is the power, so that's raised to the third power, square root of four is two, and then two cubed is two times two times two, which is eight. So eight is gonna be the answer to this problem. But again, let's just go ahead and put it back in to double check. This is the cube root of eight, which is two. Two squared is four, times three is 12, minus two is 10. So just remember, the denominator is the root and the numerator is the power. So this has been how to work with uh, radical equations, how to solve them. I'm gonna have another video uh, getting into some more challenging ones, and so you can check out that if you're interested. Subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Myers Math Tutoring, and I look forward to seeing the future videos.